So hi, my name is Greg Barnes. And this is my wife, Deborah. Hi. And I was in the Church of Scientology for 20 years, and my wife was for 19 years. I reached the level of OT7. Deborah was in the level for seven years, OT7. I'm a patron of the IAS. Deborah was on a roll. We were on OT7. We moved down to Clearwater from Dallas, Texas with our nine-year-old son, move our business down here. Uh, business uh, was expanding, doing nicely, still is expanding and doing nicely. And we came upon this reference. One of our friends, Virginia McLaffrey, an OT7 from Idaho, came down and showed us this LRH reference. I had been off the level because when Golden Age of Tech came out, I didn't like the fact that here's the second time they wanted me to redo an OT level. And I didn't care for that, so I actually left the level in 96. Wanted to just watch, see what's going to happen, but I wasn't getting back on the level because it was a redo and I didn't understand why it wasn't right the first time. So right. anyway, so that was in 96. In 98, Virginia showed me a reference. Uh, the reference is called CS Series 73RB and it is in your tech vol and it's in your green vol also. This particular reference talks about whether or not sex checks should be done when you're on OT7 and when they uh, should be done and when they shouldn't be done. Right. That's exactly what this reference says. And it, gives, it, and it also gives all the instances of when you would sex check somebody. And when you shouldn't on OT7. So there's two sides to the sex checking thing. So anyway, so uh, after I read this, I knew why I didn't want to be on 7 anymore. It's because of those sex checks. So anyway, Virginia was making a stand on this. She was on a six-month check. She was taking a position that they weren't following this reference. And uh, the Sandcastle then began inquiring with her how many people know. Well, Virginia told the MAA, her name was April Buchanan, that Greg and Deborah Barnes knew about this. So we were called down there, got an, uh, an interview by April, where April wanted to know who we had shown this reference to. And I told April, I said, I haven't shown anybody, but I didn't know it was a bad thing to do that. Right. It seemed very odd that you're so... Why aren't you showing the people this reference? And uh, the whole thing was very odd. I walked away and I told Greg, I said, Greg, the, uh, the, the, something's going to flap on this big time because now I know that they're refusing to follow an LRH reference. And we are drilled as a 20-year Scientologist that if it's written, that's what you do. And here's a reference and they're not doing it. Not only that, they don't want to know who all knows it should be done. Right. Well, plus two is that... Um you read this reference and became so excited about it, she Deborah routed right into the HGC and started getting uh, handling. Yeah, because I knew what was wrong with me because I was not doing good. I've been a seven for seven years and I wasn't doing well at all personally, spiritually. I was not doing well. Um, so when I read this reference, I knew what was wrong. I went down and originated it, bought two intensives, started doing the Elledge, which is part of a sex check. And what came out of that was uh, 25 hours of actual auditing on review of seven years of sex checks. And as they started re doing all this review on my seven years of sex checks, I knew even more beyond a shadow of a doubt that those seven years of sex checks while I won seven had harmed me and violated this LRH reference and was something that was very not good to be, do be doing. And I experienced that because they cleaned it all up. It cost me 25 hours to clean it all up. Well, also, too, is like <clears throat> they were doing a correction list, right, mm -hmm. with the preface question regarding the six-month checks, then here's the correction list question. Right. The actual question was regarding seven years of sex checks was the actual preface to all the question. And for anyone who's ever been on seven or knows about reviews and corrections, 25 hours of review is a lot of correction. And as Deborah was going through this uh, correction... She'd come home, and she was getting brighter and brighter and more uptone and more uptone and more uptone. So here it is. It's now, uh, that was in 98. That right was in 98. I actually, what actually happened is that my awareness, because of cleaning all this, what I call squirrel tech up, on me, is I became so aware and so I was so able to say anything to my auditor that I actually point out to my auditor that there was another thing she was doing that was incorrect in my auditing. I was a trained solo auditor. I know what you do and don't do. And I pointed out to her that she was doing something she shouldn't be doing. And I wanted to see what reference gave her the okay to do that. And then I asked for, and uh, I wanted to go to Qual and see that reference. So I got an okay, I went to Qual, and I saw the reference. This particular reference was how to FPRD 
uh, NOTS cases, how you, F uh, how you audit FPRD on NOTS cases. And this reference that I saw was revised June 96, which is the exact date the Golden Age of Tech for OT7 came out. And uh, the revisions were in script. And this particular reference was 50% in script, which told me right then and there that this HCOB had been majorly altered also. So now I had two datums. Number one, they were not applying an already existing HCOB, CS373 RB, refusing to apply that. Number two, I now had a majorly altered HCOB uh, on how to FPRD uh, a NOTS case, which conflicted with another confidential reference that I was very familiar with since I had soloed on seven for seven years. Which, so now which, I had three things that made no sense to me. Which that reference is, is how to, how to handle reads on OT3s and above. And how you handle reads on OTs is different than how you handle reads on people who aren't. So those of you who are watching this who are OT realize that they were not doing the sec checks per that HCOB. So you can only imagine the bypass charge that it creates when you're doing something wrong. So you're doing great. I'm, I, and and, I'm, and I'm, I'm actually doing very well. I understood what was going on now and I was not going to handle it in my sessions. I was going to take it to the ethics area once I finished my actual L agent sec check that I was on. So I went back up after I finished, saw that reference in Qual, and then they told me that my auditor was too busy. And I said, they give me another one. I said, no, thank you. I'll wait for that one. So this would have been about March of 99. Um, now, and, now, I'm on the Hubbard Ethics Specialist course. I got into the Hubbard Ethics Specialist course in February of 99. <clears throat> so here's Deborah's getting, is in the HEC, and I'm on course. And I'm having great wins on the Hubbard Ethics Specialist course. And I'm demoing KSW, Keeping Scientology Working. And here is this LRH reference on sec checks that's not being applied. Uh, I, I see my friends who are on OT7 not really doing that much better. Uh, some doing worse. And I, I just can't take it anymore. So what I do is I write this up to RTC and I tell three of my friends, right, uh, Sandy Adair, Ruth Valka, who is now uh, has dropped her body, and um, to read the reference. All I said was just read a reference. That's all I want you to just read this reference. Now, Peaches Pook, who's a class 8, who's also on OT7, calls me up one day and says, you know, you're supposed to come to FLAG feeling like shit and leaving feeling great. She goes, I came to FLAG feeling great and I left feeling like shit. So I read her a paragraph from this LRH reference, I gave her no verbal data, read her a paragraph from the reference and said, have you told your DFP? She said, yes. So that's what I did. Now, what, I want you to realize that's all that we did, but that doesn't, but you're going to hear the whole story of all that happened from just doing just that. Okay, so then we told those people. We told those people. Me, I, told, I told them. Deb did nothing. No, I didn't do anything. De 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 I didn't do anything except I was in the background going, oh, it's going to flap. Something's going to flap here. I just knew it was because, see, Virginia had already been kicked off the level by flag for, because she wasn't having enough sex with her husband. Um, and her dad was paying for most of her bridge. This, these were the reasons she was kicked off the level and her eligibility wasn't renewed because she said, I'm not doing any more sex checks because this reference says I don't have to and I shouldn't be doing it. Right. right? This is what LRH says to do and I want to do what LRH says to do. Right. And the fact that the church, no OT7s have been made since OT7 came out, this could be a reason. There's out text. Something's not being applied correctly. Right. So I am... Um, so mm. meanwhile, what's cranking, cranking going on in the, in the uh, ethics office at the Sandcastle, where all these OT7s are doing their things, is this April Buchanan is calling people in and intensively interviewing them. And then she is writing to KR uh, a report on what she's being told. Well... She sent us a copy of one, right? And we said, April, this isn't what goes on. Now, get this. She, instead of the people she's interviewing writing reports, she's writing the report. Why doesn't these people that she's interviewing writing reports? Well, because there's nothing to report. 
That's why. There was absolutely nothing to report. So she then writes the report on her interview. So we're like, see, now it's like secondhand. This is what Bloody Blah said. Because Bloody Blah didn't write it up themselves. So then now she starts writing these reports and she starts accusing Greg, me, Virginia, and Mike of, of black PR in the church. Well, we never said anything to anybody. All we did was tell them to read a reference. Now there's this written accusation that we're black PR in the Church of Scientology. And so we confronted her on the fact that that's not what happened, April. And you know that. And she actually, we have a written document from her where she said, you're right, I take it all back. No, she took back the part saying well, we were black PRing the church. Right. <clears throat> because Bill Rhodes, who was there at the meeting, not Mike McGlaffrey, it was Bill Rhodes, yourself, me in Virginia. Well, this is when Virginia showed me right. the reference. Right. When like, Virginia first showed me the reference, but I understood what was going on. Right. And we were supposed to, and we were accused of having this meeting, and that got dispelled because we didn't have any meeting. Right. We didn't have any meeting. A month's gone by since I've been back in session, so I go back down to the DP and go, "Hey guys, I want to go in session. Where's my auditor?" I wanted to finish my cycle and just get out of there because and I wasn't getting back on the level because I knew there was something really wrong with the level but I did want to finish my auditing cycle because I didn't want to be accused like they accused Virginia of refusing to do a sack check or refusing to finish my program so I'm down there saying I want to finish my program I went down there told them that and uh, they said well your auditor still too busy and I said well okay I'll, I'll wait for you to call me that was uh, early April Okay, so then that's when I told the people. Then, then I you told I told Sandy, uh, Ruth, and Peaches. Right now, there was another person involved with this, and his name is Ed, Ed Gonsolin. Ed Gonsolin, Class Eight in L.A. He knew all about this reference, and he agreed. As a matter of fact, he had taken it so far as he had found five out tech points on FPRD on applying FPRD, which is they use FPRD on the sex checks on sevens of applying FPRD sec check tech, so to speak, he'd find five violations of written scriptures from Ron that Flag was doing. Comes to our house, because he's here for a sec check. Comes to our house, he's got these five reports, he's going to go down there and he's going to handle them. Because <laughs> he's got five tech things that they're doing now that's wrong, according to him. Went down there to handle them. Well, we never saw him since. I'm called up by April Buchanan to come down and see her. So I go down and see April. I'm interviewed for two days a totaling a, a amount of seven hours about why I disagree with sex checks. And I keep telling her, April, I do not, do not disagree with sex checks. Hubbard says here in this reference, don't do it. Well, who told you that you, you should not d agree with sex checks? Has Virginia McLaffrey, has she influenced you on sex checks? And I said, no. The, here's a reference that says what it says. That's all that it says it should be applied. So April's telling me how we can't apply this reference uh, because we can't trust OT7s. They falsify worksheets. And I say, well, then those people should be pulled off the level. So finally, after seven hours of interviewing, and I'm not agreeing that we shouldn't apply the salary's reference, I'm ordered to sec checks. And I'm disagreeing with this. Go, hold it. We're discussing a reference. You're not willing to apply it because RTC is running this six month check line and I'm now being ushered to sec checks. I don't understand why. So I, I agree to go um, and it's not a sec check. Basically I'm routed up to the HGC to meet with an auditor by the name of Therese Bloom who is a class nine golden age of tech uh, auditor and auditor of the year award winning auditor. Um, and I think she's foreign. I shouldn't say I think. I know she's foreign. Uh, that's a Friday night. Uh, session goes not too easy, right? The next day I go in, uh, on a Saturday, I request a different auditor and a different CS. I'm denied the auditor and CS. Uh, I didn't sleep well the night before, uh, but I'm taken back to the, H to the auditing room anyways. Therese puts the cans in my hands. I say, look, I'm not sessionable. She goes, that's okay. We're going to do an FPRD correction list anyways. I go, that's true. I go, hold it. What do you mean? And she goes, do a metab test. So I did a metab test, right? And I said, look, I'm not sessionable. I didn't sleep well.
She goes, that's okay, we're going to do one anyways. I put the cans down. Um, I said, no, we're not. That's squirrel. We're not going to do it. Um, I refused to pick up the cans up. I'm then routed to the ethics area saying I'm being uh, not cooperative. Uh, we come back. Now, I'm then escorted back up to the HEC by Abel Buchanan and Cosima, one on either side of me, ushered back into the room, now said, you're going to do a ethics interview. I said, fine, let's do an ethics interview. The ethics interview is a repetitive command starting off, and the command is, what overt has been re-stimulated? Uh, it's being run repetitively. Uh, nothing is being taken up that read. I can't believe nothing read. A few things read, she said. Uh, never was taken earlier similar. It was never handled OT style. Uh, after about 45 minutes to an hour of this, I say no more. Uh, Therese stands up because I say, look, this is crazy. I'm leaving. This is, this is fucked. Therese stands up, says, I know you're mad at me. Why don't you hit me? Now, here's an auditor at the Sandcastle wanting me to hit her. I said, I said, I don't want to hit you. I'm not even mad at you. Okay, now I also want to interject something here. For those of you that are trained, you know the damage that this type of question can be done on an OT7. It's called a listing question. You never, ever, ever do this and what, unless you want to make someone crazy. So the fact that they did this meant they intentionally were trying to make my husband crazy. Bursting through the door is Cosima and Abel Buchanan. Because you're refusing to continue. Because I'm refusing to continue. I'm then physically taken to RTC, told that I got 10 people off the level, I'm not being cooperative, and I need uh, to continue with this ethics interview. I said, fine, I'll continue with the ethics interview, but I don't want Therese Bloom asking me a question. We go back upstairs. I'm put into the auditing room, and guess who's in there now but Therese Bloom. I agree to go back at it. She asked me a few more questions. I go, this is insane. I'm not doing it anymore. I get up. Abel Buchanan and um, Cosima come in the door again. Just, the door is unlocked. They come in the door again. Uh, they close the door, and now they will not physically let me leave. I'm saying, this is insane. This is not Scientology. Um, and I want to be let go. I want to be released. This is insane. For 45 minutes to an hour... Uh, they are pushing their bodies up against me and not allowing me to actually leave the sandcastle. Also, aren't they threatening you? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm being threatened with um, uh, your marriage will be ruined, your kid will be pulled out of a Scientology school, you'll be... Um, lose all your friends. you lose all your friends, We're your gonna business. We're going to put a turbo on you. We're going to declare you. All these threats. They're threatening me. And I said, look, I don't care what you do, but this is insane. This is not Scientology, and I'm leaving. So finally... They agreed to let me leave, conditional that I come back the next day, which I agreed to do. I agreed to come back the next day. I would have agreed to um, swim the Atlantic Ocean at that given point in time, just to get out of there. So I left. Uh, so he comes home, tells me the story, and we're like, we're never going back there again. Never because going. I knew what they had tried to do to him. They had tried to make him nuts. They tried to make, make my husband have a psychotic break. So I'm like, whoa, what is going on? So they wanted, we're not going back. So they wanted Deborah to come in. Oh, no, no, no. That was on Saturday. So that happened to him on Saturday. While I'm here home, the, uh, the MAA calls me on Saturday while he's down there, want me to come down there and see April. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. Um, if you, I don't want to do an interview with April, and if you want me to do an HCO check check, I'll do one. I got nothing to hide. I'll do one. And, uh, and Debbie Titus was your auditor, and you I said wanted- Debbie Titus is my auditor, and Debbie Titus is the only one that's going to audit me. And then I also said they wanted me to come down and get on, you know, do a metered interview, and I said no, I can't do that because I drank a beer with my pizza last night. Friday night I had pizza and I drank a beer, so I'm not meterable, so I'm not coming down. So that's what happened because that's an important thing because it comes up on my non interb as a whole nother story. So now here it is uh, Sunday. I refuse to go in. I tell them I won't let them do to Deborah what they did to me. Monday, Cosma calls me and says, well, if you won't come in, come down and get your non interb order. I said, just mail it to me. Right? Um, on Mother's Day, we, uh, we go to my parents' house. We come back. There's a message on a recorder saying, your comment is being called at 7.30. Come on in. We, we rushed. We found someone to watch Chase. Yeah, we were in shock. We didn't even have a knowledge report written on us. Right. 
So, I mean, we didn't even know there was anything like this going on. So he went in, and here is a bill of particulars on Goldenrod, okay, listing out that I got 10 people off the level, that I blew a sec check, Deborah drank so she wasn't sessionable. Um, what are the things we're On purpose. Oh. oh, it's a whole list. Whole list of stuff. So Published what? in the Sandcastle MAA's office, none of which is true, and they know it. So we're like, where's our KRs? Uh, well, that's not our responsibility to get your KRs. Yeah, you can see your K. We were told you can see your KRs at your COMEV, so, which that violates policy because normally you don't even have a COMEV until there's been a whole bunch of KRs written up on you. And, uh, you know, so here we are having a COMEV, which is the highest justice action in the church, being accused of some pretty bad things. And we have no copies of KRs. Not only, not only that, we were not allowed to even get a copy of the accusations they printed the on bill. the goldenrod, which, per policy, we're supposed to have a copy of that. Now, we showed them the HCOPL, where it says, uh, Committee of Evidence and um, Policy Letter, says you're supposed to give the person a copy of it. They said, well, here, see this? You saw it. That's your copy. But you could, we couldn't take it with us. Right. We asked them point blank. So, Why won't you give us a copy? And they, and they basically said, one of the uh, chair people of the committee said, because we don't want to. Okay, this is really getting interesting. So anyway. We go to the comment. So that was Sunday night. So then Monday night, we're allowed to see our KRs. And so Greg and I show up. It's just Greg and me. And we go over the same, or the Fort, this is the Fort Harrison, at the MAA's office of the Fort Harrison. Yeah, the whole MAA area is closed off at the uh, Fort Harrison. That's a pretty big deal, actually. Hall closed off for our comev. Greg and I are there, and we're taken one by one into a room with April so that we can see these KRs. I am shown a KR um, by a gentleman. Uh, he's a public person uh, where he was told by uh, Herb Zerden that I was running a business out of my house illegally. This was a KR written on me. Uh, it was written uh, KR by Peaches Pooks, uh, where I told Peaches that I don't allow people to write KRs in my business. Uh, if they got something to say, say to each other, right? And this is about a paragraph like this, as well as, um, and that was it. <laughs> that was it. These, these, these are, so these are two KRs I was shown. No, no, you had your non interb now that April Buchanan wrote. Well, yeah, but it's, I'm talking about reports, right? So I'm, I'm thinking this is a joke, right? As well as I brought file folders for all the committee members on what really happened. So then um, I'm released. I'm allowed to go into reception. Deborah gets called in. And, and then I'm called in by April, and this is what I have. Is I have, uh, I have a non-interb written by April, and I ask April. I said, the non-interb was written a week earlier, and I said, April, how come I didn't even know I had a non-interb order? You've got to realize now, a non-interpolation non -interpolation order issued by the church means you do one more thing to make any trouble anywhere, you're automatically declared. Boom, bam, boom, just like that. Out. And I go, April, this, I had this for a week. You never gave it to me. Why not? She goes, because I don't have to. All right, can I have a copy? No. I go, what reference are you applying? She goes, there's no reference that says I have to. And my non inter basically said that I refused an HCO sex check. I said, April, nobody called me to come get one. And that I purposely drank a beer to avoid a session. I go, April, that's not what happened at all. It didn't matter. So I had that. I had a report from Cosima about my little uh, thing with her on how I didn't want to go in and get an interview. And I had drank in a beer, so I'm not meterable. And to go ahead and give me an HCO sack check, that's fine. I'll just do one. That's what this is all about anyway. Nothing bad about that. And then uh, that's about all I had. No, I had one from Peaches Pook. She's a, a parishioner outside the church. Basically said, well, Deborah was upset with, uh, her, uh, with her six month checks, but I don't think she is anymore. That was it. And I'm being accused of, of like you know, 12 horrible things I've done to the church. Now, it's, it's important, too. We want people to understand all these points we're going over because the church has printed an entire different story about us, right? An entirely different story. And as we get going forward, and as you understand, as we get to, into the references and stuff, you'll understand why. All but right. They had to make us an unbelievable couple who basically were the scum of the scum. We had turned in, after 20 years of being in Scientology, myself being an OT committee chairman, on staff for five years, running one of the most successful WISE companies, uh, recruiting doctors, getting 70 doctors on the bridge, Deborah being a train soup, also on staff, um, 
going up the bridge, patrons, all of a sudden we had turned into, after moving to, to flag to do the Golden Age of Tech, we had turned into horrible people. Right. The last thing that April showed me was a session KR written by Therese Bloom on my husband. So what happens is when you get a sex check, the auditor will write up the bad things that you said you did, and then you have to go to the ethics officer to handle them or whatever, right? So there was a session KR written on Greg's sex check. Remember, on that earlier Friday, he actually had a session, and then he had that ethics interview where they tried to make him crazy on the following Saturday. So in this session KR written by Therese Bloom, Greg admits to everything. Oh, he was black PR in the church. He was doing this. He was throwing his son up. I'm reading this whole session KR and I knew the whole thing was a lie, which meant holy mackerel. Oh, and, oh not to mention sexual things. Oh, yeah, there were sexual things in there too that he admitted to. Uh, not very complimentary. Oh, no, that I, that I had masturbated. I hate to say something, but I'm a guy, and I have done it. But never told this auditor about it. Right. So anyway, but no great... Oh, and, oh, and I wasn't paying the bills. Didn't pay our bills. But Deborah was the FBO, so that didn't go her too good. Yeah, I knew she the knew whole, all the bills. I knew the whole thing was a lie, but the key point here is where he admits to doing all these bad things to the church, running a black PR campaign. Oh, he had decided that RTC had corrupted the tech. Um, and I read this and I go, holy mackerel, these guys will, are now making false documents on him because I knew my husband didn't do any of that. I live with him 24 hours a day and I knew they didn't show it to him because if he had saw, saw this KR, he would have been livid. He, he would, he probably would have like just walked out, out of the Fort Harrison. So I knew they didn't show it to him. So I asked him specifically, oh, did my husband, did you show this my husband? Oh yeah. Oh Yeah. Sure. Okay, good. So, so, then, so, then, so then it's my turn to go into the committee to go over our crimes. No, no, you pl we pled. We that, pled. We right, pled. That right. night was, the, the committee was all there, and we were to plead guilty or not guilty to all the crimes we are accused of now, against humanity in the church. Now, I don't want everyone to know, too, who's watching this, right? Uh, we might be rather relaxed right now in talking about this, but I want you to understand the insanity the upset and the interpolation that's going on in our lives now that our son, we might have to pull our son out of a Scientology school. Most of our uh, independent contractors as well as employees are Scientologists. A lot of our, our clients are Scientologists. All of our friends, obviously after 20 years, who are your friends? They're all Scientologists. So even though... Well, we not only to mention the fact that you're now confronted with some really unbelievable things Right. That your own church that you've supported for 20 years is actually doing, and it's right, right in front of your face. Right. you got to look at it. And it's it's ha happening. And it's happening at Flag, the same place that Lisa McPherson died. So, you know, I, I don't want you to get the idea that we just kind of lollygagged, went through this and go, oh, isn't that funny? No, uh, it was very serious. We were very upset. It's like, you know, to understand something. So we go into the ComEv, and I want you to understand something, that per policy, per the ComEv policy, Ellery says, like, you know, look, the guy who's being commented is going to be a little bit shaken or upset, so be easy on him. I sit down, and here are these, there must be eight or nine Sea Org members in full dress uniform staring at me. And they're not staring very nicely, it's kind of like this. And there's this little guy in there sitting right next to Art Webb with these, these Coke bottle glasses, right, leaning on the table, going like this to me, right? Now, I'm sitting there, I handed out to all the members all the documentation and evidence that proved that we had not done anything, right? Reports from other people, you know, time, place, form, event that proved everything that we were being accused of was garbage. Art Webb goes through all the, all the things I'm accused of, and I plead guilty to a problem because I figured I must have caused a problem to cause all this to happen. Then I'm excused and I can leave, then you go in. And I go in, I do the same thing. I plead not guilty to everything except causing a problem. And uh, so then uh, I specifically ask a committee member if I could have copies of these KRs because any, all the KRs that were written were written mostly by... The CIRG members. The CIRG members. Cosma. Running Cosma and Buchanan, the CIRG right. members running the ethics area. And the, the policy is I'm to get a copy. Nope, they're not interested, not their problem. So I was allowed five minutes to study this 
huge accusation called a bill of particulars. So I'm writing down on a piece of paper. And uh, Greg and I left. And so then I asked my husband, I said, uh, so let me tell you about this session uh, report that I saw. And I told him what was in it. And I go, were you shown that? And he said, no, he wasn't shown that at all. So I said, you know, Greg, we're to be declared. That's a down and done. We're out of here. We're declared. It's already been ordered. The question now is why and who? It doesn't matter what we do at this point. It's time to find out why and who is what's happening. After Deborah came out of uh, telling the committee or going the committee going through all the accusations or what she's accused of and how does she plea, Deborah and I are both sitting in the ethics area and Deborah is copying down the bill of particulars. Uh, one of the committee members comes out, goes into the uh, ethics uh, office, talks to Kaz, uh, April, I suspect it's April because she's the only one, only one in there, comes out and on the way into the room, going back into the other office, Deb stops her and says, excuse me, but there are several KRs that are written on us that we do not have copies of. And we would like copies of these to respond. This individual looks at Deborah and says, we are not interested in your response. And, you know, we are thoroughly dumbfounded. Right? Yeah. We are intimidated. We are in fear. We are in shock that this could be happening. Um, uh, later on, we'll be very relieved and happy that it happened, and we'll explain that as well. But, so, but I want you to really put yourself in our position. The shock of, like, we're not interested in your response. So I said, fine. Because uh, you got to realize at that point, we know we're being declared. The ramifications of that at that point are devastating in your life. Right, it's almost totally. like 20 years of Scientology, you don't know what you do if you were declared. And, and, and none of our contributions, which took up two full pages of, of fool's cap size paper, single spaced, amounted to nothing. Amounted to zip, right? So we leave. We, so, we, we, so we leave, and of we, course I asked my husband if he saw that session KR where he admits to doing, to doing all these bad things, right. oh, you yeah. know, all these bad things. Are, uh, I are moved down here to Clearwater to, to start a black PR campaign against RTC. That's right. With my business, I planned to do a, a black PR campaign. And if you believe that, then you'll probably believe the church that I was on the grassy knoll in 1963, and I shot John F. Kennedy. I'm surprised they didn't accuse us of that, <laughs> you know, or, sink, or sinking the Titanic. But what, I mean, they, but what they did do is Greg saw the actual correct session KR on that session he had. That's what he was shown. I was shown a different one, totally false. So I go, wow, Greg, now they're making up false documents in an effort to third-party people. Right, so we leave. <clears throat> Mike and Virginia come down, they go to their comm and we've agreed to not go back until they apply a policy. Yeah, after day, after day two, because uh, Mike and Verge came down the next day. They went, same scenario. And now Virginia's also read parts of this phony baloney session KR on my husband where he admits everything. She's read parts of it. So we go, okay, they're telling people, other people about this and reading to other people. Here, Greg admits to all these horrible things he's done to the church. Right, right? and I want you to understand something. Uh, because in a future video, we will be discussing some of the lost cases on libel and slander. And a church can shun its parishioners. That is legal in the United States for a church to shun. But you cannot accuse people of financial um, wrongdoing, wrongdoing or sexual or, wrongdoing. Or sexual wrongdoing. So here is your management now setting you up to pay more court fees for a libel or slander case, okay, which they have lost before. Uh, not with us, obviously, but with other people. Virgin Mike show up. They go through the same routine the next day. And then the next day, for some reason, which is now day three of the ComEv, Virginia and Mike go down to the ComEv, but they're not supposed to show up. Here is a room full of Scientologists now who are being thoroughly educated on the facts of Greg Barnes, Deborah Barnes, Virginia, and Mike. Right. Room, I don't even know what some of these people, right? Being thoroughly indoctrinated to and reading all reading all the stuff about us, blah blah blah, right? So when Virgin Mike came back and told us about that, I went, "Hey guys, this isn't a comment. They're not applying one piece of comment policy. As a matter of fact, there's no policy that's written that they're even doing." I said, "This is a black PR campaign. This is a pretended comment to ruin our reputations." 
So they're running a smear campaign on us, disguising it as a comment. That's what's going on. I said, one thing that Hubbard did that I found out was real workable is that if you have something that's really, um, what's the word I want to use, interbulating on your lines, just cut it, quit communicating with it. So we decided we were not going to participate with the ComEv. They would call us, we'd ignore their phone calls. Oh, we'd get threats, this, that. Well, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't call them back. Well, the we wanted nothing to do with it. Well, the fact of the matter is, too, right, is that they called and this girl said to me, um, I wish I remember her name, I haven't on one of reports. She goes, when are you, she goes, when are you guys going to come to your senses? I said, when are you going to come to your senses? I said, as soon as you start applying LRH policy, we'll start cooperating. Send us copies of our KRs so we can respond, and we'll cooperate. Right. Well, the other thing that we did, we go, well, this is a bullshit comev, so let's just write it up to IJC, explain to him what's going on, and ask for an honest one. Right. And, and realize, too, we're talking very calmly now, right? Uh, we got about maybe three hours of sleep a night. Yeah. We... Uh, Worked fever, you know, didn't eat well, feverishly worked, setting up mounds and mounds of reports, right? Uh, FedEx is to IJC, help us, help us, help us. Uh, comms to all the international management, right? Um, and they knew about it all. They knew about the squirrel sec check. They knew about the, the, the black PR campaign, all of it. I got two comms back from IJC saying, thank you for the information. Uh, we are reviewing it. If you have any more information, please provide it to the COMF committee. Uh, and that was it. Right. In regards to, we sent, we sent IJC a uh, request to get rid of this COMEV, issue an honest one, and here's our contributions. Because, see, contributions in Scientology are supposed to carry a lot of weight. We right. had two pages, two huge pages of con 20 years contributions, and uh, we never got any response to that. Ever. Well, matter, matter of fact, when I asked the COMEV committee member if she had seen my contributions, or our contributions, I go, did you see our contributions? She goes, yes. I go, what do you think about it? She goes, well, we're not sure it's all true. <laughs> so, so you, you got to realize, every, every corner we turned, we were being invalidated, invalidated, you know, evaluated, nullified. Suppressed. Suppressed. There was a total attempt, and they did a very good job, to beat us into submission. Right. And I can only say this, that after spending close to a half a million dollars in Scientology, about $150,000, $200,000 on OT7, that we had gotten something out of it. The ability to hold a position. Because, see, they weren't applying LRH. We started looking up PR Series 18. If you get out your green balls and look at PR Series 18, Hubbard will say, if somebody's black PRing you, they have crimes. They have huge crimes. Dead bodies. Well, you got Lisa McPherson. Embezzlement, other major crimes. Crimes of magnitude. So we decided, the four of us, Verge, Mike, my husband, and myself, decided this is a smear campaign on us. we got to investigate our own church. Right. It's time to start investigating to find out what the hell is going on. So you got to realize, we're using our own scriptures to find out what the hell is going on and who, what is going on at the church, and for Christ's the, And sake. the only thing that kept us sane was Hubbard's data on, if this is happening, do this. Right. So here's the organization, the Mecca of Tech, and not everybody over there. Let's be very, very clear. We have a select group of individuals, right, who are, have gone insane, literally insane, okay? And so now we start applying the PR Series 18. So we start investigating. We get on the Internet. Sure. That, oh, man, we're, we're, we're looking up court documents, and boy, oh, boy, are we finding stuff. Well, about six weeks after the COMEV, remember how this all started out with that uh, CS373RB, that reference that we said, you're not applying it, and then they wanted to know well, who all of you told this reference to. As a matter of fact, I want to see, and I want to show this, if I can. This is in the CS373RB, is an HCLB, but it's also in tech ball, it's also an HCLPL, uh, it's in this technical book, the green book, right? What do you call them? The OEC. OEC, sorry, it's the camera nervous. Right, on page one 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 one. <laughs> one thousand one hundred eleven is, is what page it's on. And I just want to read you one quick paragraph so you understand what we're talking about here. And Hubbard says, and this is on page one 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 three at the very top it says pre OTs progressing well in the no interference area should not be interfered with by sec checks or anything else. However, when a pre OT is stalled or moving slowly, 
any of the actions listed below as appropriate can be ordered by a qualified CS, PTS handling, confessionals and OWs, uh, handling of postulates, considerations, FPRD, evil purposes, surfact handling, disagreement checks. So that means, basically, if you're progressing well, you shouldn't be interfered with. Every six months, somebody's being interfered with. Um, and I also want to back up a little bit to let you know, too, that I wrote up, here's a full letter to David Miscavige, right, and regarding the six-month checks, because I couldn't find any, you know, any policy letters. There's no reference on six-month That has, a, has the name six-month check. Now it's called refresher, and I can guarantee you there's no HCOBs or, or policy letters regarding refreshers. But that, at that point, it was six-month checks. Now, I wrote a letter to Miscavige, and I got a letter back from Ensign Ann Rathburn, and it says, Dear Greg, your letter of April 29 concerning the subject of six-month checks was forwarded to me to answer. As the Deputy Inspector General of Flag Land Base, I can deal with such matters directly. I want to assure you that the six-month check line is absolutely an on-source line based on LRH policy letters, HCOBs, Case Supervised Series and Solonauts References. Well, there's no LRH policy letter or HCLB that says anything about it. None. If you can find, well, there might be one now. There could be one they just come out with saying, oops, we found something by LRH, <laughs> you know, that, uh, and, we, and, and here it is, you know. But there isn't any. All there is is this HCLB. So go ahead. So now we have this All HCLB. Right. Okay, so, so meanwhile now the COMEV is over and of course, oh, it's really bad if you refuse to cooperate with the COMEV. I mean, we have really put our necks on the chopping block now because we refuse to cooperate and the penalties are double. according to, And that's per policy. So now we have really put our head on the chopping block. And i got to tell you quite honestly, we're, we're like... We're praying that IJC is going to save our lives. You got to realize, we really thought that our lives, we, our lives were going to be ruined if we were declared. It was like we didn't even know what we would do, be, become right. if we were declared. It was right. one of the scariest thoughts I could ever imagine. And, and also realize this too, right? Is that we told, right? Of all of our friends down here in Clearwater, and even the people who who were visiting us, we told maybe three people. Because our story is so unbelievable that if you know us, I couldn't make something like this up. But if one of my friends had had happened to them, had had happened to them what happened to me, and they told me this story, I myself would have a hard time believing them. It is too unbelievable. It was set up in a perfect way that we are. Who are you going to believe? Well, let's finish uh, the story. Okay, so... Where did the, the story's not over, okay? It gets better. It gets better. So we're now sit, We're laying low. I tell Greg, all right, we're, we're here in Clearwater. You know, we're five minutes from the flag base. We're just laying low. Lay low. I go to one-stop shop every day to pick up our mail. Right. And now, and so, and we have a billing service for, for chiropractors. So all of a sudden, uh, one of our billers, Tony Reed, calls up and says, Dr. Maggie Goodyear is leaving us. And I said, Why? He said that she spoke to Haviva, an MAA at the Sandcastle, and um, she basically. Um, Greg, you're, Greg, you're missing the you're missing the first part of that. Okay. She was told. No, no, things. no. That that was, that all occurred when they when they did the smear campaign local. Because remember, it got on what's her face lines, and she called her, and then she called her. You got to talk about the smear campaign first. Remember. They started with Bonetta Slaughter. Oh. Come in oh. and see what the Barnes is oh, done. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, they, good. They started a smear campaign. When All right, they start no, 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 no. This happened next. Oh, yeah, go ahead. All over right, there. so it's now we're laying low. We're just laying low, and we're, we're, we're hoping for the best. We're just hoping for the best. Not going to make no trouble. We got nine in terms. One wrong move. We're declared. We're not going to give them any honest reason to declare us. If they're going to declare us, they're going to have to do it by made-up stuff. I didn't that was our attitude. I didn't even gonna, speed. Right, I mean, I we, we just laid low, right? They, they weren't going to get me on nothing except they had, it had to be a lie, right? Because we, I knew now that the reason for the non interb is that if I told anybody what they just did, I'd be declared. And see, it would be a, a right reason to do it. I upset somebody in the field with my lies, so right? That, so anyway, six weeks are going by now, it's past the COMEV, and all of a sudden, we get in the mail, CS Series 73RA. Now you got to realize this RB and RA and all, these are revisions. B would be uh, revised third time. Th third revision, and we had A copy of A. 
Okay, good. Now, the first thing we got to cop, because we kept, we kept wanting to figure out, what is the big beef with this reference? This, the fact that we said that they were not applying this reference created all this hoopla, all this lying about us. Man, there must be hot, something hot about this reference, and there is. There is very something hot about it. Number one, it was written... Uh, in 1971 and revised in 85. Hubbard died in 86. Right. So so one could assume that this was, in fact, revised by L. Ron Hubbard because he wasn't dead yet, right? One could assume now, that. the one thing that's real interesting is that the R.A. version is 12 pages long. The R.B. version is only five. Wow, that's a lot of information that's just been ripped out of a reference. Right. Now, also, okay, so what happens now, too, is that our friends are being called up. No, 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 no. Nope, here's what happened next. So what do we do? We don't really know what's going on in the church even at that point, even though we're investigating. We faxed it to OSA. <laughs> because they got to know somebody's corrupting the tech. My God, do you know what kind of legal situation this could put the <laughs> church in? Right. We think we're helping them. We didn't realize that we were like the Jews reporting to Hitler. The, the SS is killing us. We faxed it to OSA. Going, what the fuck's going on here? Look what somebody's doing. We found it. We found it. You got to find out who's doing this, putting our church at risk, right? And of course, it wasn't long afterwards we found out that that was like we're the Jews reporting to Hitler, the SS is killing us. Because now they knew we had the reference. Now we were becoming real dangerous because we could <laughs> prove somebody's corrupting the tech. There's a story about this reference. There's a class eight in the field. I'll leave out his name. He was a uh, CS at AOLA in, Calif in Los Angeles, California, back during 1988 to 1989. RTC sent a huge mission out to pick up what's called Class 8 Packs, which is a series of all the technical bulletins and scriptures on, on uh, a, high, a highly skilled auditor would know and have and always use. This RA 12-page reference was in there. RTC wanted them all picked up. Well, this Class 8 didn't like that. So he hid his Class 8 pack so it couldn't be picked up. And this particular reference was in that Class 8 pack. It had never been printed in a book because they were always reprinting the books and it never got printed in a book. So it was very easy to hide it. And basically they are now hiding this particular reference. They're hiding it so hard the fact that this reference exists isn't even on the RB. Is they they always supposed to list all the revisions on a bulletin. This revision isn't even on the third revision. They omit it completely that it even exists right. on the third. They're hiding it so hard. And in this particular reference, uh, Mr. Hubbard makes no bones that on OT7 you don't even FPRD somebody. He says that specifically. You do not do FPRD on someone who's on OT7. Right. Okay, so now we <laughs> fax this to OSA thinking that we are doing the right thing. Right. And what ensues from there is now the black PR campaign. Locally now. Locally. Local smear campaign happens very shortly after that, where, once again, April Buchanan is now calling people in the field. She starts with Bonetta Slaughter. She starts with, because Bonetta Slaughter knows everybody, would get everybody on the bandwagon. They're all, yes. they're all pulled down to the MA's office to be shown these accusations the on bill, us. The bill, the bill of particulars. particulars. And God knows what else they showed them. And, and, and who are you going to believe? Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the MAA's office? Or are you going to believe some public sitting in the field? Well, nobody ever asked us anyway. We, we, we didn't even respond well, they were, to any of this stuff. We had no copies. Right. They were told, look how bad these people are. They've gone wacky. Right. Don't talk to them. They're, they're in ethics. They're no, no. They were told that a declare was eminent. Because, and how we found out this was going on is we got faxes from people. Uh, faxes from our, from our so-called friends saying, Oh, go down there right now. You've got to handle your situation. You're going to get declared. It's coming right now. Right. Well, we were on vacation when that yeah, happened. Yeah, we were actually on vacation. These faxes were coming in. So anyway, so then we find out that... Um, then one of our clients leaves because she has been read uh, this rather uh, slanderous and libelous document, uh, which you should all know, also know is contractual interference. Okay, uh, she leaves our service um, because she's told by by the church that we're bad people, and she won't pay her bill. Yeah, she okay. won't pay her bill now. So now I've had enough of this. So I basically get one of my friends locally. Uh, used to be friends, to contact Ben Shaw, who is the CEO of OSA Flag, 
And I send him a communication, and in that communication I list out what's going on, uh, the black PR, the contractual interferences, that's breaking the law, and so, this has to stop. The insanity has to stop. Yeah, like, we, you know, we're still thinking OSHA, you know, OSHA's a, a place to go to. It's creating an exterior situation. Right, so let's back up a little bit. When I contact Ben Shaw, we have not faxed him this. Oh, yeah, OSA Int had it already. Oh, oh OSA oh, Int. Yeah. Okay, so OSA Int was sent that. OSA, OSA, OSA Int was, was sent this. that. So Ben Shaw calls us up, <laughs> calls us up, and we go down and see Ben Shaw at the bank building in that nice big conference room, and Ben Shaw's sitting there with this other girl who I don't know, this lady. And Ben Shaw is very concerned. He goes, you know, you're right. This thing has gotten totally out of hand. Why don't you let me investigate what's going on, and I'll get back to you. So he gets back to us, right? That's what the first meeting. And we think he's going to do something. Yeah, we actually think, like, okay, goo, we found somebody saying here's Somebody's right. going to handle this craziness. What the heck's going on he's here? He's going to do something. And, and so he calls us up, and... Was that the meeting I'm going to have now with, with, is it Kathy or Debbie True? Yeah, yeah, it's Kathy True. Kathy True. So I'm called up and said, you know, Greg, OSA in has sent down someone to handle your cycle personally. Wow, that's pretty good. So um, he goes, I want you to meet me over at the Fort Harrison. Well, I'm not too interested in really meeting on church property considering what we've just been through. He goes, look, he goes, it's me. Just chill out. It's okay. So I said, okay, good. I'll, I'll meet with you. So I meet with Ben. Uh, he then introduces me to uh, Kathy True. And now she's an auditor. <laughs> who, then, who then escorts me up to the HGC. We're talking very nicely into an auditing room where she then opens up a red vol to withholds. And I said, what are we doing? I thought you were here. Oh, and Ben Shaw said preface to us meeting. He goes, she wants to ask you some questions about this entire cycle. She knows all about it. She knows more about it than I do. So here we are in the HCC. I said, well, I thought you wanted to ask me some questions. And she goes, well, I want to handle this first. I go, handle what? She goes, well, I want to help you. I go, great. Then let's stop the black PR campaign. Let's handle the false reports that are put on my wife and I. Right? Um, and I said, because you're not going to audit me. And I said, plus, if you really wanted to help me, you'd be doing an L4BRA or BRB. I just finished an uncertainty course. And when you, because when you have all this out tech on somebody, you do a correction list, not hatting them up on withholds. See, that was the whole thing. Introvert you, introvert you, introvert you. It's you, it's you, it's you. I, I couldn't understand it. So I, said, so I said, you know, that's it. That's enough, right? You're here to ask me questions. You're not asking me any questions, right? I went through the entire story with her. It was almost like there was this fake interest, so I leave the Fort Harrison with her. Very pleasant uh, goodbye in the whole bit. We have another meeting with Ben and Kathy. I said, I want, we want to see the KRs. We want to see the knowledge reports. Yeah, because they, yeah, because they're like, oh, oh, well, they said, well, these knowledge reports are really bad. And, of course, now OSA's telling us that the, 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 the COMEV is, has been stopped. On hold. On hold. COMEV's on hold. That's right. Um, and uh, we're going to try to sort this out before the final findings come out. Right. And so what happens next is we go to, so here's our third meeting with Ben Shaw, and we are now told we are a legal threat. Well, I asked Ben, I said, so Ben, how come you won't give me copies of the KRs? And he goes, because you're a legal threat. And I'm going, what? I haven't even talked to a lawyer. And I'm going, oh, and, and then I realized I'm a legal threat because all the reports are lies, which is why they can't give them to me. Because if they gave them to me, I could go legal on them. <laughs> because so, it's all a bunch of lies. That's why they can't give me copies. Because if it was true about me, there's their defense. So now we're, called, now, so now we're nullified some more and introverted, attempted to be introverted, that we're now a legal threat. So Ben Shaw agrees to... Meet with us again, and this time give us the KRs. No, I read them. We can read, read them. Because he goes, oh, they're really bad. Oh, well, yeah, because I, like, I call Ben up a week later, and he goes, so where is it? And he goes, he goes I've seen them. And he goes, uh, there's some pretty serious reports here. I said, okay. I said, when can we see these pretty serious reports? We want to respond. So we go there, and it's, it's myself, uh, Deborah, Ben Shaw, Debbie True. Kathy True. Kathy True. I can't this girl's name. Kathy True. Now, we look at these reports. There's a report written on us by, uh, and these, none of these are KR. No, there's a few of them are KRs, but we don't have any copies. We don't have, we don't have any copies, and, and it appeared that what was going on is that even after our combo, they are majorly soliciting anything they can from anybody. As a matter of fact, 
One thing that they had also done is one of my vendors, one of my most productive vendors who worked for me, who was a Scientologist, who didn't know anything about us, was actually, remember when they were um, uh, black, calling people down calling people in the, in the field here locally in Clearwater, all of our friends, anybody and everybody, calling them into the, into the to find out all about us. Um, they had they had called him down there also, and uh, they're he, good. Yeah, he, he he was very very upset. When but, he he said when he left there, he thought we were bad hats. Yeah, he thought we were really bad people. And he knows us. And he knows us. He works with us. But, he knows but it. when we brought him back, when he came back here and he met with us, and we showed him the reports by the MAA herself, retracting some of the stuff that she had not told him that she was retracted, he got an entirely different perspective of it. So now it's our last meeting. This is our, well, we didn't know it's our last meeting, but it's our meeting with Ben Shaw and uh, True. Or is it false? Anyways, and so we meet with them. Uh, they show us these reports, which is... See, and they're sitting there as we're reading their, these reports. Ben Shaw and Kathy True, they're sitting there and they're watching our reaction, right? You can and just tell that is the whole thing is there. They are trying to create some kind of effect on me here. I'm reading this stuff, mm -hmm. and I just start laughing because it is so completely, utterly ridiculous. I told Ben Shaw after I read him, I said, Ben, I didn't even want a copy of this trash. There isn't, any, there isn't one shred of evidence that I have committed any crime on the church. And I told him, I said, just finish the damn commev. And he says instantly, you're blackmailing me. And I go, What? I'm blackmailing you, and then I realize that they're using this declare as blackmail on me. And I said, just finish the commev. And he goes, what about your friends? And I go, what about them? He goes, what about your eternity? And I said, Ben, you're not selling any kind of eternity I'm interested in. And then they said, well, do you need a session? Da -da 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 -da. I go, no, we don't need a session. This isn't about sessions. This is about doing the right thing. This is about honesty. Uh, and then they said, uh, well, um, what was one of the other things they said? There was a... Well, and then... Uh, oh, no, this is what they said. They said, the only way this could have happened is you had to have done something bad. I'm going, what? You do this crap to me, which means I'm bad? Boy, are you guys warped. That's what they said. Remember that? Yeah. They said, this could have never happened to you unless you had done something really, really bad. Well, and, but, <laughs> exactly. That is a warped piece of tech, let me tell you. That is not what L. Ron Hubbard ever said. Well, but see, that's the church's idea. If it happened to you, then you pulled it in. Yeah, well, see, the church... But, of course, if it happens to the church, they didn't pull it oh, in. Oh, that's it's right. It's SP's attacking the church. All right, right. The church, the church ends up in court, dead bodies, libel, slander cases, everything else, it's SP's attacking them. It happens to us... We pulled it in. Don't understand that, but we don't have to understand it anymore because we're not part of that. So anyways, and here's something else is that uh, True and Ben Shaw admit that Therese Bloom did what she did. Right. They said, you know, she was out tech. Poor Therese, she said, they said, was under a lot of pressure. Yeah, she did. <laughs> and she had some 2D problems. Never once did they apologize to me. And then Kathy True looks at me and she goes, do you know how many Class 9 auditors there are? There's not that many. And it's like, I'm like going, you know, I, geez, I'm sorry that I was there when she decided to go crazy. You know, I said, but who was the CS? Oh, there was no CS. Oh, yeah, then they tried to say there was no CS. I go, nah. bullshit. The CS was the, was the deputy senior CS, you know, over there at the Sandcastle. Yeah, that was right? Oh, no, no, it wasn't. I go, hold it. I was told that my CS was the deputy senior CS. Oh, no, there was no CS. So here it is, no CS. So you have a Class 9 auditor, right, and two MAAs on their own decide to arbitrarily write up a program and try to spin in an OT7. Now, if you'll believe that, then I have some property down in South Florida to sell you because that was like, at that, after the meeting we said, that's it, we're never going back. Yeah, yeah, because see, now we know that OSA, it was, it, it was, uh, OSA is going to do nothing for us here. As a matter of fact, OSA is covering up. And, you know, and here's something else, too. Remember I said this to Ben Shaw. I said, you know, Ben, if I was going to black PR somebody, this is exactly how I would do it. I want you to picture this. You have Cosmo, who's been the MAA at the Sandcastle forever. You have Abel Buchanan, who's this cute little blonde with this very convincing smile and ARC and care. You have this award-winning, you know, uh, Class gold, nine auditor, gold major Bloom. tech auditor. You have 
all these other people in the Comev, and they're all saying the same thing about Deb and I. Who are you going to believe? Right? I said it was perfect. It was just set up masterfully. Because if I was going to do it to somebody, that's exactly how I would do it. I would take authority figures that the church believes, and then I would basically have them saying, oh, poor Greg has gone south. You know, he's gone crazy. And people are going to believe it. It's going to be believable. So we leave there. So we leave there, and as far as we're concerned, we don't really care what they do. We really don't. We don't care what, what they're going to do. We then just continue to investigate the church, get on the Internet, pull documents. And this is why the church does not want you on the Internet. is because on the Internet is all the data about the current management's uh, illegal activities that they've gotten caught for, as well as court cases and other extremely interesting stories by other Scientologists. Yeah, there's a lot of crazies on there. There's also people who have stories that are not crazy and that are very, very true. Not to mention the technical alterations that are going on with the basic books and other technical matters. Uh, so you've got to realize here as 20th Scientologists, we are really taught that you don't re write, rewrite Hubbard's tech. It's a policy called Keeping Scientology Working. And in this it says uh, you, can't, you, you can only be upbraided for no results or bad results. So now I understand why Lisa happened. They're not using, they're not using uh, the scriptures right. They're rewriting well, them and explain why, because at least it was definitely a bad result, for Christ's sake. Totally. Lisa goes you clear know? six months later. She goes crazy and then dies 17 days later. Yeah, right. So, I mean, I can't support, I can't support and, this stuff. And, I'm out of here. I'm I'll, gone. I'll say one thing about Lisa, because I was a, a, a PR spokesman for the church regarding the, the press, Lisa McPherson. Is they have lied, they lied to most of the parishioners about what really happened. In another video, we'll go over some things about what they told me, and I will basically tell you what I know that occurred. But so now we've left, and now the full core black PR program starts. And it's bad enough that they're maligning my reputation and Deborah's reputation, but now they start going after my nine year old son. He is supposed to go to the uh, movies. Tony Reed's going to take him to the movies with his uh, nephew, Trevor. It's going to be Star Wars movies. It's a Sunday. Tony Reed goes to pick up Trevor and Steve and Pam Hackley, people that we have known for years, tell Tony that they do not want their son, Trevor, playing with our son, Chase, because of what we have done. Now realize, we weren't even declared at that point. So now This was like five months before a declare was ever issued. So now it's bad enough that they came after us, but now they want to see what other points that they can go after and get. Um, so now at this point, we be just began, be began to like really continue to investigate to find out the truth about what the heck happened at the Church of Scientology because that is no longer, we knew that was no longer the Church of Scientology. It was a total pretense. No, it was, and, it was. So we knew that. So now it just began, who are they? Where are they? What really happened? How did this all happen? We couldn't you believe, we, but you see, we could not believe that this was happening. It was like a nightmare that we couldn't wake up from. Well, you got to realize. I was hoping I'd wake up one yeah, day. Yeah, 20 and, years and, and, of and, everything, it, 20 years of everything we believed was basically shaken Right. You believe something for 20 years, it's all shaken, and it was a very humbling experience, but I wouldn't change that experience for anything, because one thing I wanted, and one thing I still believe in, and Hubbard has said this, is that live with the truth, be on the road to truth. So I told my husband, I said, I want the truth, I don't care what it is, right. I don't care, as long as, I, as long as the truth, that's what I want, because I want to live my life with the truth. So anyway, the, the uh, OSA then also began to use the Lisa McPherson trust to smear us, even though we had never caught, never really done much with them or anything. They were We'd telling never, people right, that the, we were, but we weren't. We, I had never spoken to anybody at the Lisa McPherson trust. As a matter of fact, we were hoping the church would go away. We want nothing more to do with any conflicts they were involved in, right? right. And, and then it got to the point to where uh, now we're going into January of 2000. We think they're going to go away. Right, it's been six months. Yeah, and we just thought, okay, we're laying low. We're not making any trouble for them. Next not making any trouble in the field. We're right. just laying low, minding our own business, doing our thing. But we're we're in, we're watching them on the internet and investigating them. So next thing we find out is that one of uh, Chase's teachers at Delphi uh, faxes us a note and says that. Uh, she no longer wants her son to play with Chase no, after no, no, school. No, 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 that was after the declare. No, no, no three was, weeks. No, no, it was before the declare. No, it wasn't. Yes, it, no. Excuse, excuse me. It was before the declare. No, it wasn't. It was after the declare, Greg. 
Oh, was it actually? Uh-huh. Three weeks before we declared, Herb Zerden, long-term friend of ours, is called directly oh, okay. by OSA to be told. He, I don't know what all they told him, but he called us up and said, your son cannot play with my son anymore. Up to that point, this was January now, up to that point, Chase was still playing with his son. There was, we never said anything to anybody. Any Scientologist we did deal with, we never told them anything. They wouldn't believe us. Who would believe us? Who would believe us? So we never told anybody. So any contact we had with Scientologists, we, we were just, hey, you know, not it never was. never talked about the church, nothing. So then, so we go, oh, okay, that was three weeks before the declare was actually issued. So I go, so Greg, they're either really going to issue it, or they're still trying to, like, get us to come back, or I don't know what, I don't know what they're doing, right? So, but it was upsetting, because now i got to explain to my son why he can't see his best friend anymore. So anyways, so on February 14th, which is Valentine's Day, uh, we received our badge of courage, which is a SP declare right here, okay? And I want to go over some of it with you. It says, in October of 98, Greg and Eric Barnes spread falsehoods and black PR and advocated squirreling of the standard application of LRH technology in an effort to prevent others from progressing up the bridge. Um, that never happened, okay? Now, I also want you to understand, too, that in the policy letter on how to issue ethics orders, LRH says, be specific, so they say that we spread falsehoods in black PR. Uh, that's not true. It can be proven not true, but it doesn't matter. This is what is the church says, and there are certain individuals that will just believe whatever the church says. Don't look and think for yourself. Just believe what we say. Um, they basically said here that we've attempted to convince other Scientologists to participate in squirrel actions. I don't know what those actions are, but we have pointed out that the six-month check, now called Refresher, is not standard. So I don't know how we want people to participate in squirrel actions. They created in tribulation with their off-source activities, Natter and Black PR. I don't know who we nattered to. Uh, in Nat Pretty much everything they accused us of, we can prove that's exactly what they did. It says here, they refused numerous offers to apply standard LRH tech to straighten out their confusions and out ethics. Not once were they willing to apply any policy. Not once were they willing to apply any form of decency or ARC in discussing with us or being up front. Our, it was sealed, packed, sealed, and determined where we were going to go if we did not crawl back on our hands and knees. And I'm sorry, but if that's freedom, I'll take slavery. Okay? That's, it was just gross. So here it is. Number three, it says, issuing alter is Scientology technical data or information or instructional or admin procedures, calling it Scientology or calling it something else to confuse or deceive people as to the true source beliefs and practices of Scientology. So ladies and gentlemen, what they're saying is Deborah and I, and anyone who knows us knows how busy we are, in our spare time we drafted a 12-page LRH 8COB. We actually went down to the copyright office we copywritten it, copywrote it, so that we could basically publish and issue this as Alter is technology. And if you believe that, well, you can believe it. But we were declared and black PR'd for doing nothing more than finding out that somebody is rewriting LRH technical bulletins. Not only that, they're rewriting it to make money because the sec checks that sevens have to get every six months are very expensive to the tune of $16,000 every six months. Yeah, 16 to 20 with accommodations and airplane fare. Right. This is a very expensive activity, costs a lot of money, and basically we caught them doing something they shouldn't do. We could prove, Ellery said, don't do that, and it's all about money. And, but it also, it wasn't a matter of catching. We didn't, and it wasn't like we were looking. No, we weren't really. It's looking. like, here it was. Here's the large reference. Let's apply it. And, and, and the fear of it. Oh, also, what should be known, too, is Ben Shaw said to you and I, we said, did you get this reference? This is the 12-page CS Series 73RA. He goes, yes, where'd you get it? Yeah, that was the only he thing they asked He didn't say anything else. He they says, wanted to know where we got that copy. And we're like going, <laughs> and no one's willing to talk to us about this reference. Uh-uh. No one's willing to, it's like, where'd you get it? It's, it, you know, guys... Unbelievable. Now we were declared, and um, we had nine independent contractors, eight of which were Scientologists. And um, of the 75-some-odd clients we had, maybe 20 were Scientologists. 
Um, and I want people who are watching this, whether you know us or not, or whether you're a Scientologist or you're thinking about getting in, that your life becomes nothing but Scientologists. You know, your friends are Scientologists, the business starts becoming Scientologists, and so now what's going to happen? So the church started going after our clients. Uh, one of our clients, very specifically, they went to his office. They actually threatened him. Yeah, he was a Scientologist. Um, he refused to disconnect, so to speak. And uh, the church actually went to his office and threatened him with a declare if he didn't disconnect from us. Right. And he just basically refused. So, so, he, so here it is. It's like, you know... Uh, all we're, these... getting let, we're getting letters from clients saying, uh, uh, the, uh, the church just called me and I'm terminating my contract effective immediately. Right. <laughs> uh, now, the big question is, is how did the church know who our clients were? Right, so that was interesting. That's, a, that's, that's still an unanswered question. And then, and then here, here are these independent contractors, uh, two of which said that they were our closest, dearest friends. And now we have become the devil incarnate. Uh, they disconnect. They have nothing more to do with us. They won't communicate. We have to threaten them legally to talk to us. So I think people should know that this organization will go after your finance lines. They will go after your business. And they did. And we have the documentation to prove that these false documents were... This false document right here accusing us of all these things, right? That's all a lie, was used then to try to harm my business. Right, which it did. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it, it, it cost us well over $100,000 a year. It did harm our business. Um, so that occurred. Um, it's not over yet. Um, and, you know, we are taking somewhat of a risk on really coming public and saying this. But we want our friends to know what really happened. Okay, because you won't hear this from the church. They can't tell you what really happened. Because if they told you what really happened, you'd walk away. So um, I want to say that um, after after being declared and realizing what we realized, and, and 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 we put and we stood up to a tremendous amount of pressure by the organization, very specific people in the organization, OSA. Uh, the MAA's office and other people, uh, not to mention our friends on the outside, uh, we, put up with the, we, we withstood all that because we believed in holding a position that this was right. It was not right from, from um, I'm going to be right no matter what, and I can't look and I can't see, but this is not okay to treat people this way. Okay? And all of a sudden, all the things that I had read over the years, in the newspaper, I'd seen in TV, or read in, in magazines was true. What I had read that this organization had done to other people was now, had now been done to me. And it was so unbelievable that this was true. It was, it was shocking. And you gotta realize by the time our declare had come out, we already had lost most of our friends because they had all been told six months prior how bad we were and they weren't calling us and we weren't calling them. Um, so we, we, we couldn't call them because what are we going to say to them? Y yeah, you know? what are we going to say to them? I mean, we, we want to tell them what's going on, but it's like they were, people were, it was like rats jumping off of a ship and we were so, um, we were shocked that here was people that we had known for 20 years, 15 years, 10 years that we had helped financially or helped in other ways or they had helped us and all of a sudden, uh, just because some organization says we're bad, just because someone says we're they bad, believe it. They be, it's like, and even if they didn't believe it, they didn't want anything to do with this because, as 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 one good friend of ours, you know, Jeff Shafter says, I don't want to get in the middle of a war. It was like, where's where's the code of honor? You know, never allow affinity to be alloyed. Never desert a comrade in need. That was nowhere. It was virtually nowhere. Um, but here's the thing that I want anyone who's in the church who's ever thought about leaving, um, and that's your own decision. You know, we're not here to say that everything is bad about the technology because it's not, and we think there's, there is value in it. But we want you to know something, that it is so exhilarating to no longer have to condition your thinking, to have to uh, justify your actions to some 17-year-old MAA who knows nothing really about life or family or kids, right? To be able to have your own thoughts, to be able to talk to who, anyone you want about anything you want, right? Um, 
the, the, the case gain on that, the resurgence of case gain, you really do become more OT because you're free. You know, if you feel free inside the church, fine, continue, right? But I'll tell you something, when you get away from these controlling, these controlling, the control mechanisms, you know, all the events, uh, which we'll be having another video on, um, the IAS horrible stories about this going on, that going on, and all the money pressure, the pressure of money being put on your lives, when that's all gone, right, you're free. You are really free to think, to look, to act, and decide how you want your life to be. And I got a lot out of Scientology. There's no doubt in my mind. I got, and I will say that to the end of time, I got a tremendous amount out we, of it. We both got something out of it. We also used uh, the scriptures of Scientology to, to find out what we found out. To get out of it. And, you know, <laughs> and, and, and so we just want our friends to know that we're doing great. We are doing extremely well. As a matter of fact, I've never been freer in my whole life. So if the subject's supposed to free you, I did use the subject to become more free right. as an individual. So to that extent, I can say it worked. Right. And I don't think for a moment that uh, Ellen Hubbard left uh, meant for these things to occur. Right. Now, you can sit there and think, well, geez, they must have pulled it in. Because that's the party line. They pulled it in. Look, you see, they pulled it in. What is their out ethics? Well, I'll tell you what our out ethics is. Our out ethics is that we have been out ethics probably for 15 out of the 20 years of being members of the Church of Scientology because we invalidated our own personal integrity. We ignored the out points that we saw for so many years. We justified and rationalized some of the most insane behavior by other church members, you know, criminal behavior, um, just insane acts. That's our out ethics, right? And we decided, we got our ethics in. And we got our ethics in by moving to the, to the mecca of tech. We live five minutes from flag. We have not left. We have not moved. We have no intention of moving because we like Clearwater. We like Scientologists. We're not enemies to Scientologists. Any of you can call us whenever you want. You can talk to us. If you still love the technology, that's fine. You can love it. We like it too, right? Uh, if you want to talk and ask us questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Uh, but we want people to know that it's time that you do something to speak out that you look where the church doesn't want you to look. And be very specific, the management. Get onto the internet. Look where they don't want you to look. If you have one of those uh, web page uh, disks that they put into your computer, realize that that web disk that they put into your computer is stopping you from looking all over the internet. And if the church is saying, well, we did that because there's OT material on the internet, realize this. There's like that much OT material on the internet. Okay, It's insignificant. If not, I can't even find it. Okay. But get there, learn, look, and see. Think for yourself. That's what you need to do. Isn't that what this subject's all about, is think for yourself? Yeah. Be free, look at things. Hubbard looked at everything. He read everything. He probably did about everything. But we as members, we can't. We can't think. For, you know, it's like, I know a guy, he, he told a dirty joke you know, on OT7. He, and he got into a whole bunch of trouble just for telling a dirty joke. He told a dirty joke, he had to do lower conditions. But that's besides the point. Look, <laughs> we want everyone to know that we're doing great. That you can We've do never done better. In the 20 uh, years I've been in Scientology, I have never personally and spiritually done better than I'm doing today. And that's a fact. It is. So what I want everybody to know is that there is a life, a bigger life, outside of the Church of Scientology. The Church of Scientology is the Truman Show. There is a bigger life out there with all kinds of great people to meet from all various beliefs and I want to meet all of them and I want to find out about all various beliefs because I'm free to choose whatever belief I want now. Right. And it's like, it's like you know, you got to make up your own mind and make up your own, dis and, and decide for yourself. Don't be not be influenced by what we said. Don't even believe what we said. Okay, think that we're crazy. Oh, they're nuts, they're SPs, you know, they're special people. I've always known I was a special person anyways. Right? But go look for yourself. You decide. Okay, you decide for yourself what's right and what's true. Don't believe what someone's telling you, right? Go look and you decide. That's integrity. Personal integrity is your ability to look and decide for yourself what's true for you according to your own observation, and that is all. Um, is there anything and my, more? my only last comment is, is that the biggest thing that we had to overcome was fear. 
And that fear is created by an illusion because I've gone through it and it's all an illusion. All the threats the church made me and all the, th the horrible things that I thought were going to happen to me if I left the church or was declared never happen. It's all an illusion. And if you can just get beyond that, there's freedom on the other side of that fear. Right. And the big question you've got to ask yourself, what are you doing in a church that you're afraid of? Right. You gotta ask yourself that. Why would you be afraid of your own church? Wait, and, and you know, <laughs> and if I was in the church today and I was watching this video, I'd say, well, I'm not afraid of the church. Right. I understand that. But go into the Oregon mission and say what you really want to say. Okay? Or come down to Flag and say, these six month checks or refreshers are bullshit. Watch how quickly you're ripping out a check and writing a check and getting sec checked until you do agree with what they say. Okay? Um,. I wish everyone the best. I hope you all do great. You're open to communicate to us at any time you want. Uh, even you, Ben Shaw, someday you'll come to your senses, I'm sure, and you'll see the errors of your ways. And you can call us, too. We don't hate anybody. No, we don't you hate know, anybody. It's like, it's like they did us a favor by showing us a side of them we would have never seen, ever seen, right. if they had not, excuse the French, bitch slapped us so hard. We would have never woken up. To what's really going on. Right, and I can, I can tell you this, is that whatever the church accuses others of doing, you will find somewhere the evidence that they, in fact, did it themselves. Right. And I, and and I, I have proven that every time and time and time, from religious discrimination to everything else, they themselves have done it themselves. And they, that's what they use to divert your attention to looking at them. Right. So that's just the truth. It is. And so... Um, from Flag or from Clearwater, Florida, we say <laughs> um, this might look like a couch at the Sandcastle, but it's not. <laughs> so from Clearwater, Florida, we say goodbye. Um, have a great life, and uh, we wish you all well. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, bye. You gonna wait? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs>